Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office selection. I thought we'd go ahead and continue where we left off on Saturday, uh, looking at the story of David, King David, uh, and his taking of the wife of Uriah the Hittite and him having Uriah killed. Uh, and so, of course, obviously God is not pleased with this. Uh, and so we hear this from the second book of Samuel, uh, chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was to come for him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth that man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives unto thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given thee unto such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart for thine own house, because thou despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Howbeit because of this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house. There's consequences for sin. And as David has learned now, that in fact the consequence for his sinfulness, right, first to start out with lust, with Bathsheba and taking her and having relations with her when he, he, she wasn't his wife. And then when he had impregnated her, he tried to get Uriah to go and sleep with her so that he could say, well, it must be your child. And when Uriah stuck to his duty as a leader of the, of the forces of the, of the military and would not go and have a night of ease with his wife, then David had him killed by putting him in front of the fiercest part of the battle on purpose. And so it is, the consequence is that he will not, that child will not live. And the other consequence is that the sword will never leave his house. And we do know from the story of David that the rest of his rule will be one of battle after battle after battle. And in fact, David's one great desire is to build a temple for the living God. But God says that'll be to your inheritance, right? It'll be Solomon who will build the great house, the great temple. So anyways, we see here sin has consequences. And as much as David did many good things and was certainly God's chosen, and God was faithful in fulfilling his promise to send an heir in the person of Jesus Christ to be the savior of the world, we also hear that in his sin, the consequences had to be paid. So today's Monday, uh, and today at 1215, we will have a special Holy Communion service. We will have a requiem mass for the repose of the soul of Queen Elizabeth, the Supreme Governor of the Church of, Eve, of England and the Defender of the Faith. Those are two titles that now pass on to her son, Charles. Uh, but we will pray for the repose of the Elizabeth's soul, that God would receive her into his loving arms. And with ancillary prayers for the good of the Church of England, our Mother Church. Uh, and that service will be at 1215 today. And may your Monday be full of blessings.